This is the third year in a row when I start the new year showcasing a current desk setup of mine. 2020 is no different and I'm happy to show you around my new studio editing setup. Hey guys, this is E and if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Eskren and most people call me E and this is my 2020 video editing setup. Some of the items that I'll list below are devices or components that I've used in the past or in previous setups because they are that good and I find no reason to change them at the moment. Others are items that I just acquired and I can't wait to share them with you. Now my editing machine is a 2018 almost specked out MacBook Pro which I've mentioned in more than one video so I'm not going to go into details talking about it. If you want to learn more be sure to check out the description below or the card above. The desk here is from Ikea and it's called Edison. Edison? I'm not sure. And I ordered it in the largest top size possible. It is a very sturdy desk with dark gray metal legs that can be height adjusted. However, don't be fooled that they can be adjusted on the fly. The height settings should be done upon the desk assembly because once the top is on, it won't be straightforward to raise it up or down, especially if you are by yourself. The top itself is wooden with a black coating that is quite tough, easily resisting everyday abuse. The only downside here is that black is a magnet for dust, so if you go for that color, make sure to have a microfiber cloth laying around. I am starting 2020 with a dual monitor setup again, and these 27 inch panels I've raved about for a long time. They are by LG and are very inexpensive 4K monitors that produce great colors, come in stylish thin bezels, and have all the IO you'll need. The model number is LG 27UD88-W, I think, and uh, you can check out my dedicated review again in the description below or following the link above. The monitors are floating on a single dual monitor arm, which sounds interesting, uh, which honestly I don't remember the model number or the brand for that matter. It is an inexpensive but robust solution that I've used over the last three years and I'll make sure to find the same or maybe a similar product and link it below. The cable management on the back is not what you would call hidden, but you can only see it if you're taking a peek at the very sides of the desk, which works for me. On the back of the LG monitors, using double-sided tape, I've placed one of my favorite SD card readers from Kingston. I know I'm crippling its speed by plugging it into the monitor, but this is now my secondary media reader, and I use it primarily for photos. In order to follow the dark theme, and this not being my primary reader and coming in white, I decided to hide it behind the monitor. The weird black device sitting right next to the laptop is a hard disk reader for my Atomos Ninja camera monitor, which I use to dump all the footage that I take during the day, so I can call this my new reader. A discovery on the desk and something that I'm very excited about is the new powered speakers by Canton. They are model number YU2 and are the smallest of the Canton lineup. I can't wait to show you my dedicated review covering them because they are truly fantastic. So stay tuned for that. Moving on to some peripherals. My keyboard of choice is the Logitech K780, which is a Bluetooth multi-device keyboard with twist. It has a pleasant ridge that can hold pretty much any phone or tablet at the perfect viewing angle, which is excellent because if I decide to put my iPad Pro into use, I can simply dock it. Switching between devices takes little to no time and typing on it is a breeze. The keys are quiet but firm and overall it is a very comfortable to type on. The mouse that I went for this year is the Logitech MX Master 3 and aside from the initial impression of going back to a very ergonomic mouse, I'll keep my thoughts for this device and share them in my upcoming review. Whenever I want to give my editing private, I take out the Audio-Technica M50 XBT headphones because they are the standard when it comes to high fidelity. For my editing sessions, I use them plugged in because any latency matters if you're editing to the beat. The rest of the time they are cordless and I enjoy them when I'm roaming around the studio. The chair that I'm sitting on is called Herman Miller & Body, which is iconic for its ergonomic functions and in many cases for the elegant design approach. I went for the black because black is timeless and it looks good no matter the desk that I use it on. The chair is genuinely comfortable thanks to its numerous and intelligent adjustments. If you want me to do a dedicated review of it, let me know in the comment section below. 
So if I were to make any upgrades to this setup, it will be in the monitor area, not because those screens are bad, but because I've had them for far too long. And maybe because I tried the 5K 2K panel by LG later in 2019. Aside from that, I might go for a wireless mechanical keyboard as long as it looks aesthetically pleasing. And that's pretty much it. Wishing you all the best in 2020, and if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. It's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.